Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's workshop. Today, we will talk about AI in fashion retail industry, and our speaker, Kadim Tashdemir, will be with us. Kadim Tashdemir is a machine learning expert with more than 20 years' experience. In addition to fashion retail industry, he, de he has developed machine learning solutions for various applications, including urban monitoring, extraterrestrial exploration, monitoring agricultural resources, and food quality assessment. He got his PhD from Rice University, funded by NASA. He worked as a researcher at European Commission Joint Research Center, where he received Best Young Scientist Award. He also worked as faculty member and received prestigious career grants from European Union and Turkey. He organized machine learning workshops and summer schools. He has numerous publications in scientific journals and conferences. Currently, he's a machine learning consultant at Browsen. Having said that, I want I, I am giving the microphone to Kadim Tashdemir in uh, his presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kadim from Browsing AI team, and I hope that we recover fast from this pandemic that we have been experiencing so far, and we can go back to our normal lives as soon as possible. Uh, so. As Browsing, we are a pure uh, technology company that can uh, develop uh, state-of-the-art AI technologies to uh, address the key inefficiencies in the fashion art, uh, fashion retail industry. So, okay. So we, from the very first day that uh, human had clothes on, fashion has been a major necessity for us, you know, to cover us with these clothes. And also, it's a way of expressing our own uh, personalities. And uh, this made the fashion retail industry one of the biggest industries. And from that, uh, in 2018, actually, it was estimated that the fashion retail industry has about $3 trillion, which is actually 2% uh, of the uh, global GDP. And recent AI innovations has been uh, transforming this retail uh, industry fundamentally from design and manufacture to uh, marketing and sales, especially with the recent you know, social media, with the you know, phones and et cetera. We have been experiencing a lot of uh, transformation in, in this fashion retail where we can have much more different uh, aspects where we can, you know, take advantage of the recent AI uh, solutions and we can apply them to improve the industry much more. And in addition to this and uh, the traditional approach that we are having, we do have so many different applications in uh, e-commerce and more recently these, you know, mobile apps where with the recent AI enabled shopping apps, it's very easy to allow the customers to take screenshots of the clothes they like you know on their friends on themselves or they see online and identify a shoppable apparels and accessories in that photo and then find the same outfit and similar styles throughout over here and <clears throat> there have been many recent developments and browsing is one of them and there are so others that you can see in this uh, slide over here where you can shop the inspirational products from a given image or you can complete the look and all as you see over here depends <clears throat> uh, de depends on, on, on the fashion uh, applications that you are looking for and over here what we can do more is visual search where we can have the shop to look we can have product recommendation based on these a uh, visual search and also we can have automated image tagging and we can have you know sign assistance smart chatbots and etc and these of all you know ai in the fashion industry has a major impact in almost every aspect of the industry so we are all very familiar of the you know product recommendations of the major uh, e-commerce retailers and also recently we do have much more uh, fashion retail uh, applications from the social media media apps as well and all, all, all these type of applications, on the one hand, it improves the customer satisfaction because now we are able to get more personalized, easy to reach, and uh, we are having much more enjoyable shopping experiences where we can find whenever, whatever we want, and we can shop those wherever we want. And through these applications, we can reach them easily. And on the other hand, our satisfaction makes 
the retailers even more happy and it reduces the operational and inventory costs on their side by <clears throat> automation and uh, predictive analytics and also this improve their uh, store services while engaging uh, more customers to the store. And when both customers and retailers are happy as a result, uh, this makes much more convenient uh, results for both sides. And according to a study by uh, Juniper Research, global spending on the AI technologies on uh, fashion and retail industry is expected to reach more or less uh, 8 billion per year by the year 2022, which is actually a four times increase of 2018, $2 billion. And you can see that there's a high potential over here to develop AI technologies for this fashion retailing industry. And if you remember that this, uh, this industry was about $3 trillion, you know, they are much more willing to spend like 8 billion per year to you know, AI-based technologies. And there are so many different applications with the new AI approach. So we will be able to have, you know, apparel design of before, you know, manufacturing on, on the design part, we can have AI parts on that based on personalized colors, patterns or styles. We can have optimal manufacturing based on data analytics and seasonal demand, expected sales and et cetera. And some retail sto stores start to use these uh, smart pairs where, where you can uh, virtual try on your uh, clothes without even you know uh, getting them on and you can complete your look by looking at different products on, on the mirrors and then you can locate them in the store and etc and of course you can uh, integrate all these kind of information into your mobile devices to have much uh, convenient personal user experience and also, you know, <clears throat> with the e-commerce side, with the AI, we can now have and analyze fast changing customer needs and expectations. We can have this visual search. We can expect customer behaviors, produce a personalized, per personalized recommendations and et cetera. And also, you know, we can use some, you know, uh, smart chatbots on, on, on these e-commerce sites where we can have information about the user and we can have the deliberate interaction between customer and these chatbots to give them a much more personalized experience. However, I would like to here mention that among all these you know, AI innovations, uh, visual search market is much more important and because <clears throat> it gives much more information about the fashion items and it is very important to identify and describe these fashion items in an automated fashion since the visual search market is expected to reach to you know, more or less $30 billion in, in, in this decade. And then having investments in those cases where we have better visual search result will increase the revenue of the, uh, of the stores. And then the early adapters will gain a lot from this uh, better visual experiences. So another study actually shows that the, especially the youth at the millennials and also the XZ generations are much more comfortable with visual search rather than trying to you know, shop with live chat, augmented reality and et cetera. And almost, I mean, more than 60% of them are very comfortable with visual uh, search-based uh, shopping. And among them, all these you know, visual search market, 40% uh, belongs to apparel. So there are also um, many different <clears throat> uh, saying of dif different companies on how visual information uh, is justified. First of all, you know, 90% of information to our human brain is visual and the brain can identify these images in you know, as little as 13 milliseconds. And you can say again, you know, 62% of millennials want visual search and 85% of respondents, for example, put importance on visual information than text information when shopping for clothing. And this is very actual uh, information and it makes us, you know, even much more important to uh, develop uh, visual search algorithms. So back to the first slide where we do have you know, different types of applications. And from here, 
you can see that most of them have visual search type based applications and we can use all you know ai machine learning or deep learning ideas on this to get a better visual search of these objects so that we can have a better understanding of the fashion objects their attributes their descriptors so that we can come up with better uh, recommendation systems for that okay where are we going to start from this the very first step is to find this uh, fashion objects from the images and whenever we can detect a fashion object over here so you can we, we, we do have a brown jacket over here we identified its location we can extract that information and the very next step is to uh, come up with some uh, nice uh, feature descriptors for them and then we will be able to get those information and with that information we will be able to capturing uh, similar products and then we can show them to, to our customers and on on the one but bottom right you can see another image where we are able to detect the fashion item and here we discover its attribute which we can use to you know use for you know automatic uh, image tagging or we can use this information for styling assistant and also we can use all these attributes for you know nlp search type uh, product recommendation recommendation as well. For, for this one, we, we, we detect you know, pink uh, jacket with plain pattern, short length, long sleeves, and v-neck and, and to be used in formal occasion. And also in addition to these, you know, uh, fashion objects, we are also, uh, uh, we can develop <clears throat> a descriptor for our images and then we can find images with the same style information or images with the same product so that we can have uh, cases where we can you know either shop the look or we can have the complete look type of application or we can have the same style from all this and in order to have all this the very first step is to actually uh, get ob object detections sorry so whenever we do have a object the very first uh, step is to find the corresponding fashion objects over here and as long as we can locate them and then we can uh, clearly identify all those objects we can easily find the corresponding products whether for jackets or for sweaters and then we can make this alignment between these fashion objects and the products in the catalog and then we can make a similar search based on this but as i said the very first step is how we can find these fashion objects so <coughs> sorry here we will first uh, obtain an object detection for a given image we will detect the objects of fashions from this image and a very common way of doing this is faster are said and i will go step by step through all this in a bit but the idea is that to use a convolutional neural network where you can find a feature map of of the image and from this image from this feature map using a region uh, proposal uh, network we can identify regions of objects in the image and by using that identification that uh, location information uh, by combining it with feature map we will be able to get these locations and then corresponding fashion labels so before giving info on faster rsm maybe it's better to give information on its predecessors which is the region based uh, convolutional neural network and these uh, methods are basically new i mean the, the last six years more or less and the idea over here is that uh, we we have an image and from this image, we have some region of interest where they can obtain our objects. And first of all, with the selective search, we obtain more or less like uh, 2000 uh, region proposals from these images. And then for each region proposal, we use a convolution network. And then from this network, we get feature maps for each corresponding regions. And after having the con convolution feature maps for each region, we can use SVM support vector measures to find uh, the corresponding uh, fashion object and label them to the corresponding class. 
And as you see, and as you can imagine, this is a very computationally expensive uh, process to have all these you know, 2K uh, selective search proposals and from that using all these co convolution nets and then SVMs is very tedious. And what, how we can uh, improve the quality of this approach is that instead of having region proposals first, we can use a convolution network and from this, we can get the feature map of the image. And by using this convolutional net feature map, we can now have a region proposals based on this uh, convolution uh, networks feature map. And on top, again, we are using selective search here, and then we are getting like 2000 region proposals over here. And then from that, by using fully connected layers, we, we get our objects with the corresponding labels. Here, the bottleneck is the uh, selective search, and we can even uh, improve this by proposing the faster RCNN, where instead of using the selective search approach, we are again obtaining our uh, feature map by using a convolutional network. And from that, we do have our feature maps. And then by using this feature maps, we are using another network, which is called the region proposal network by using some sliding windows and K anchor boxes over here. And each, K anchor boxes has the same center with some different shapes so that we can have different size of objects using this region proposal network. And then taking the proposals from there and then feature map from the convolutional net, we can combine them, use a region of interest pooling. I will show a better explanation in a bit. And then with this classifier, we get our objects. So actually this is how we can uh, visualize much better here. So we do have a convolutional network here. And from this convolution network, and by the way, this convolution network can be ResNet, you know, uh, Google Net, and another uh, type, any of your preference, but ResNet 101 layers uh, perform very uh, good results, especially for fashion objects that we have been uh, using in the last couple of years. So here, <clears throat> with the convolutional net here, we, we do have our feature map. And from this feature map, we have regions where we have objects and non-object style. And we take this and then feed this into region proposal network. And from this region proposal network, we identify locations of objects together with some objectiveness score. If this objectiveness score is high enough, then we, we do have uh, object regions and from these regions over here and then using the feature map we take those regions and then warp them in order to have the same uh, object image sizes and then we feed these images into uh, fully connected layers so that we can get our classes and then we do have another uh, full, fully connected layer here to have a boundary box of each corresponding object. So with this approach, it is much faster compared to other uh, region-based ap approaches over here. And as you see, it's even uh, 10 times faster than fast RCN, and it's quite uh, usable for our applications. And over here, this uh, shows the feature descriptors of our objects for this specific example so that we can get uh, the class corresponding uh, classes for this information using these fully connected layers. So as a next step, if we would like to go further and instead of having the fashion B box, we may go into details of this instance segmentation and try to identify all uh, different types, all pixel-based segmentation, which, is, uh, which seems nice, but it is quite hectic to have all this training for different types of features and requires uh, a lot of labeling. So actually we do prefer uh, to have fashion uh, bounding boxes and use this information, the mask RCN and this you know, instant segmentation for other uh, purposes on, on the next slides. So what mask RCN is does, uh, it adds a parallel branch uh, to the RCNN so that <clears throat> it can predict the object mass for each pixels. And actually it uh, applies a full con 
and cosmology network for image segmentation. And after Fester RCN, and there have been so many new methods actually have been proposed in the last five years. And it, there's a new method almost every other month to which can you know out, outperform other object detection methods on COCO uh, test data set, of course, with some you know computational complexity. However, in our applications, we are fine by faster RCN and also you know retina that <clears throat> approach can also be employed for such uh, object detection for fashion applications. So now we made an object detection and then we were able to identify all the fashion objects from the image. The very next step is how can I describe uh, my objects so that I can uh, classify them with respect, with respect to different classification problems or I can regress those values to get some idea that can be used for uh, visual search or for some you know, fashion uh, challenges. The, the thing that we are going to <clears throat> uh, take interest more is to obtain the fashion attributes. And so that we can get all uh, detailed information about this uh, data. And from that, we can use them either for you know, style description or for other you know, visual search parameters as well. And here again, we, we have a convolutional network here, convolutional layer. Here we can use you know ResNet or uh, others as well. And <clears throat> after here we have our descriptors here, and we we are going to use this as the you know convolutional neural network feature descriptors. And from here we will continue, and then we, by using fully connected layers, we will get our fashion attributes. Also by using a similar network, we will get our logos, the brand information of our objects. And also by using contrastive learning, we can get much better uh, feature vectors for our visual search. So <clears throat> even for faster RCNN and for this type of object descriptors, uh, we can use ResNet. And for that, I would like to give, probably you are much familiar with this uh, ResNet uh, structure, but I'd like to give a brief information just uh, to refresh the information as well. So basically what ResNet does is that it's actually uh, trying to solve the uh, vanishing gradient challenge of the you know plane network structure of, of the VGG19, where we have <clears throat> only one directional connection and we do not have any shortcuts between any layers. And then with this representation, we had the issue of this, you know, vanishing gradient, and it was not uh, possible to uh, train the ways in the early rays. And this structure will, would avoid that because of this, you know, vanishing gradients. And in order to solve that, and instead of uh, trying to learn a transform function from X to FX, with this residual learning, what we are learning is that the value X plus some residual remaining or going through these convolutional networks and we are learning this FX function and we do have this shortcut over here. And there's this simple solution uh, avoids this vanishing gradient and allows much deeper networks which, uh, which uh, achieve much higher accuracies. And over here, we can have two layers for this, you know, 34 layer residual and then when we look at, at each step, more or less, the image size is reduced to half. And then we do have increasing number of filters at each layer, starting from 64, and then we go up to 512. And for ResNet 50, 100, <clears throat> 1 and 152, what we do is that instead of using two level of three by three convolutions, uh, we are using one by one convolution followed by three by three convolution and again, uh, one by one convolution. And with this representation, we will be able to use much more filters with much less number of uh, training parameters. So this is a very complex slide, but it's actually showing the uh, ResNet structure. As you see over here for ResNet, we do have 
uh, four layers followed by a, you know seven by seven convolutions and the maximum pulling. We do have a first layer where we have filters of 64 and two, 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 uh, 56. And then we have a second layer, we have a third layer, and we have a fourth layer where, where at each layer we have increasing number of filters. So I will not go into detail over here, but for 101, uh, we do have this many blocks in, in the first layer, three of, the, three of these three blocks. In the second one, we have four. In the third layer, we do have 23 of these uh, purple blocks. And on the, on the fourth layer, we do have eight of these blocks. And having that, we will be able to capture our uh, feature descriptors. Now, the goal is to get the fashion attributes. We said that we are going to use a ResNet over here, and at the end, we will have our uh, feature descriptors. And for fashion attributes, which I mean, since this is one of the basic and most important par part of our uh, fashion applications, what we are going to do is that we clearly identify more than 500 different attributes where we can uh, describe different object classes, different types of objects in each from caps uh, to boots. We can have so many different attributes for each type of product. So we would like to include all of them. And that's why this, this goes uh, more than 500. Uh, the very basic one, you know, you, you can easily determine color, pattern, material of the product, length, type, and etc. And after this uh, feature map that we would get here by using fully connected layer, here we do not have a, a classification network, but we do have a regression network because we would like to get all the information over here. And between zero and one, we would like to match the ratio, the ratio of these images where or how they can fit to each attribute. Okay. So when we identify the object as jackets, and then from this jacket, we can identify all these you know, different attributes where, which are uh, related to this jacket attributes, such as denim jacket, drop shoulders, no pattern, mid-wash denim, the color is dark blue or navy, and the breast pockets long sleeve, and etc. And we can use all these uh, attributes for different purposes. So the very first approach, or the very first thing that we can use this information is NLP search, or you know, searching by word to find all, all these products. For example, when we know the attributes of this dress like mini spaghetti strap, the color. And then since we know the attributes now, we can easily make this a search uh, through these words. And for example, for this bag, it's a handbag. It has a leopard pattern or for these boots, they, they have you know, knee high style with stiletto heels and etc. And as a reverse side, whenever we, we can have uh, these images, and we can obtain all these objects and their corresponding attributes, we can easily automatically uh, tag these images saying that, oh, okay, this image is uh, a mini dress with spaghetti strap and the color is beige. And similarly for these rules, we can make this auto tagging. What we can more with these object attributes, we can uh, get style information because style information is more or less is a combination of different attributes of different products. And we can get, since we do know the attribute values of each product in the image, we can come up with their combinations and then we can uh, identify different styles in these images. And for example, here we can see all images which have a camouflage pattern. And similarly, you can uh, come up with and introduce uh, different type of style information where you can have, you know, a combination of uh, product attributes information. For example, you can have some style information for sexy, some style information for street wear, and then based on this combination, uh, you can get these uh, styles easily by using the attributes. In addition, since we do know the attributes of all these products, 
for a given object, we can easily find how we can find this object and how we can complement this object with the corresponding uh, facial products. For example, over here, we have a white uh, sweater, I think. And then uh, we can complement this by, you know, by, by a black dotted skirt with some handbag and with, with the corresponding shoes. And we can easily find all this information based on these you know, attribute values. And in addition to that, uh, we can find these, also the attributes and also the feature descriptors. So before going into detail, I, I just want to give a brief information on how we can do uh, visual synthesis search with our feature descriptors, these object descriptors. So a very convenient way, let's say, of doing this search is to use the NAV algorithm, which is actually an approximate nearest neighbor algorithm, and you can easily find the Python implementation online available. And this is really very convenient, and it has the ability to use static files as indexes, and it seems to perform really in well for our cases, which have up to uh, 1,000 uh, dimensions. And also, it has small memory usage and then shares memory between you know multiple processes. So how does this work? Basically, it builds a random uh, projection tree at every time, and then it has k of these uh, random projections and then as a combination of these random projections it combines them have a you know force of trees and then you determine uh, the search with respect to that information so how, how you do that uh, you have a you know, projection at every point in the tree you you have a random hyperplane chosen which divides the space into two subspaces and this is a hyperplane actually chosen between the two, sam two uh, sampling points, which are you know from this from this subset, and then you take the hyperplane equal distance from them. So this is a just you know basic random projection, and then you have this random projections of you know k different trees, and then you come up with a nice uh, search results, and it actually uh, works pretty well, surprisingly pretty well for high dimension of our data. Okay, uh, if we remember, let's go step by step what we have done so far. We get the image, we obtain the uh, objects, and from those objects, we obtained object descriptors, we obtained uh, attributes, and etc. And now, by using those descriptors and also by using those, you know, annoy search, we can uh, determine the similar products from our catalog in this image. And from that, what we are going to have is that we, we, we have an image over here. And from this image, we are obtaining all the relevant products. And for each product, we do have all, all the values. So don't worry about these blue black cases. And from here, we do have the similar products from our catalog. And now we are ready to recommend these uh, products to the consumers so that they can make judges about these representations. Okay, so whenever we can, we have these object descriptors for specific fashion items, what we can do is that since an image or a style, whatever you, you call it, or an you know, inspiration, you can call it an inspirational image for your fashion as well, has a combination of all these, you know, uh, different object uh, detectors, uh, object descriptors. If we combine them all together, since we do have C different, which is where this is more or less like more than 50 uh, fashion classes, and then you do have D descriptors for each object, you can combine this to have a C by D uh, descriptor matrix or you can get this as a you know, uh, one dimensional uh, uh, representation. And from that, again, by using uh, NOI search or some other uh, search like HNSW. And from that, you will be able to get uh, items or you will be able to get 
images with the same style information. And so that you can come up with uh, style recommendations for corresponding images. Okay. Yet another application, what we can do with these you know, deep uh, networks, we can find the brand information of all, all these object items. Again, uh, we do have a similar uh, deep uh, network. And then over here, we do have you know, convolution layer fully connected there. And then at the end, from this classification network, we get the logos of each brand. And then by using, by adding this information, we can have much more, much more accurate results with respect to uh, the brand of the store or with respect to the you know, brands of the uh, search. We can, so here we have a representation of, over here. So there's like two of them. We do have a classification of you know, this logo over here and then we do have a Louis Vuitton uh, bag over here. Okay, so up to now, all these uh, recommendations, like product recommendations, image recommendations, styling assistance, or style recommendations, uh, have been performed by using the content filtering, by using uh, these descriptors that we obtain from our convolutional neural networks. And as an alternative, what we can do is that, instead of going through all these content-based information, we can go through the user behaviors. And from these user behaviors, we can find similar customers. And using the information of these similar customers, like who liked what, or who bought what, who, who, who saw who, which, which profile, and etc., we can uh, recommend products based on this you know, collaboration uh, between similar customers. I will not go into detail on this, but I can say that you know Light FM uh, Python implementation has a vast amount of uh, popular recommendation algorithms. It's easy to use, it's fast and high quality, and also it makes it possible to incorporate both item and user metadata into traditional metrics factor factorization. And moreover, by using this algorithm, you will be able to get recommendations to generalize items or to new users whenever you are uh, you know, using this for your fashion and recommendation skips. So yet another thing, I mean that there are uh, different applications of this one in using you know, smart mirror applications and styling assistant, but there's no actual uh, representation which is working perfectly so far is that uh, for a user, for a customer, what you can do is that by using the customer information, like the face information or other information, you can uh, collect the products that uh, she likes or he likes, and then you can combine all, all this information and then come up with a you know, fashion, art, fashion image for that uh, corresponding user and customer. And this is an uh, area which you know does not have a perfect uh, solution yet. So up to now, I try to cover more or less in a brief fashion uh, what type of uh, applications that we can use by using uh, recent uh, developments of AI in you know basically for e-commerce and social media applications. Now I would like to turn our side a bit and would like to uh, look at uh, systems like for fashion retail industries where uh, you ca we can use in in-stores. As I said in the beginning of my talk is that uh, when we have all this information available for the uh, stores in e-commerce uh, retailers, they can easily get uh, user information. They can easily determine their demand, their sale. They can easily, not easily, but they can uh, find the fashion trends. They can find you know, uh, better recommendations to their customers and et cetera. But uh, for offline stores, you know, the actual stores, not the off online ones, they do not have this vast amount of information of, of the customers. So in order to 
solve this issue and then help offline retailers to be on the same site with the online stores, what we can do is that we can build up the uh, in-store camera systems. And in this in-store camera systems, we can just track the customers entering to the store, uh, get the relevant uh, information from these customers, such as their age, gender, ethnicity, or their size information, even their you know footwear information, together with their outfit recognition, we can combine all these informations into one basket, more or less. And then the store owner can identify the performance of their store. Is it you know good because of the stuff? Is it good because of the customers? Or based on these customer uh, details, how can they improve their sales? How can they improve their inventory or the trends in the stores and etc. So <clears throat> whenever they can reach this information and whenever they can have the data analysis that online stores can have, uh, with this information they can get you know better and smart uh, business decision which help them a lot in terms of you know, conversion rates so that they can get better profits and they can get uh, better uh, customer satisfaction. So how can we do, do this? Basically, we, we can have some, you know, intelligent AI cameras inside the stores where uh, we can uh, exploit some of this information locally without avoiding the, you know, uh, proprietary laws of the uh, customers. So we do not want to get the inform the actual information of the customers and then upload them to service to analyze them. But we would like to get only the relevant uh, customer characteristics data without even identifying the customer, but just to know, you know, how they uh, wear clothes, how their styles and their, you know, uh, age information, gender information, so that we can get a, uh, statistics of the customers from the stores. Basically, <clears throat> here, what we will do is that we recognize people entering to the store, and we will count the unique customers, and then we can identify all this store uh, stuff, and we can say, that, okay, this is a person working here, or this is a, a revisiting customer, and we can determine how long they will spend in the store, and which one of them will, uh, is going to you know, make a purchase or they will go without making a pur purchase. And this depends on having a you know, camera settings and calibration. And we, we are going to have these uh, in-store uh, computations where we will do you know, motion detection, tracking, and all, all the corresponding uh, recognition so that we can identify the custom, uh, not identify, but get the characteristics of the customer, with even the you know, size information. And we will uh, upload all the relevant data to the data where on the server, we can do all the relevant you know, visual search or output recognition that I have been talking in, in the beginning of this call. And we can make the, you know, Fashion object detection, we can do the you know similarity search, and we can make the similarity search based on the catalog of the store so that they can have a better understanding of how their customer fit to their catalog, and they can make updates in the in their catalog with respect to that. Again, we can have the style estimation, we can have the recommendations based on that, we can have the logos and etc. And whenever we do have uh, the uh, numbers of customers and all these relevant information readily available for the, for the stores, we can get the web analytics where uh, we can uh, obtain this information, we can detect, we can diagnose this data, we can you know, have much smart decision on these analytics. So how does this work? Actually, this, this is an actual store work where we do have the camera uh, working. Over here, we, we, we have a camera and, and this camera takes pictures whenever a customer enters the store, we get all the information over here and we are actually you know, taking the face out so that we will not avoid the uh, confidentiality of, of, of the customer. 
and we will get all the you know gender, age, emotion, at least the re-identification information. And from this point, we, we will get and identify the actual uh, outfit recognition of this person. So what we will get, we will we don't know what the customer is, but we know uh, her, you know, or his uh, gender, age, ethnicity, their height, their size, and and, and all, all the outfit uh, recognition. How we can get the size information is a, a bit uh, tr tricky. So to get the information, you can use the mask RCN and the slate information that you can get with you know detectron or the, you know, the actual implementation of the mask RCN. Over here, we will be able to get the person information, and from this person information, uh, and combining this with the you know camera calibration and store settings, we and the relational positions of, of the you know. Uh, store location, we will be able to get the size information of the customers. What can we do more? We can have all these uh, customers uh, walking through the stores. And from that, what we can do, we can track all these customers, how they behave inside the stores. And through that, we can identify their interactions with the shelves, their interactions with the clothes and their interactions with the staff so that we can have heat maps at different locations of the stores. We can have interaction maps with the stuff and we can have the track map of the customers. We can find their dwell time uh, inside the stores, how long they will stay here. And also by having cameras behind the uh, cashiers or next to the cashiers, we will be able to capture who is buying and who is not. And using this information is much more uh, valuable for you know offline retail stores because they will not get such information otherwise whereas you know online information is much more available for the online retailers so on the web analytics and diagnostics but as long as we do have all these informations from the product products as you see over here we can contain <clears throat> we can calculate how many times a customer with a short enter to the store how many times a customer with trainer in entered to the store and etc. And among them, we can find all this, since we can identify the patterns, we can determine that, okay, from the, from 10% of trainers, let's say 50% of them were, you know, white and we can get all these filters over here. And then we can determine which uh, customer age range are you know, wearing uh, what type of clothes and etc. As long as we do have this customer information from the store, uh, the store can reach so many detailed information about the customers. Even sometimes, online you know retail shops can cannot achieve. And over here, for all different stores, you can have all this information. You can compare your stores between between different aspects and etc. And in addition to you know the detailed assessment of these assessments, again, these all depends on actual and accurate uh, determination of your attributes, right? That I have been talking in the beginning. And by using that, this will give much more information, much detailed information for your stores. And also you can get, you know, customer statistics such as age, season, where I mean season is the, you know, uh, is determined uh, based on the you know uh, assortment of, of, of the customers genders and others as well so these are yet another uh, data that we can get with these data which which is actually very valuable we can get these data by just using some ai tools with you know with a camera inside a store we can find find for example top male products during some particular you know date and uh, some top female products which have been you know put on during this period the season distribution and the other uh, distributions as well so I, and more importantly uh, by having this data you can come up with diagnosis diagnosis we can come up with uh, predictive analytics and you can come up with anomaly detection based on all these you know different filters
So I will just uh, want to uh, briefly mention on how we can do this uh, inside the store. So basically there are uh, a lot of edge computing devices so far, just Nano is one of them and Raspberry is the other one. And there have been uh, many other uh, ongoing attempts here as well. And also major uh, camera companies are planning to come up with AI based uh, camera systems too. But currently what we are using is that we, we do have a Raspberry here and we do have a, you know, Intel uh, Movidus neural computing stick. And then we, we obtain a camera system like this one. And from that we, we can obtain a power of Ethernet uh, enabled uh, camera system where we can get all this local information and obtain this information from the stores. And I will not go into detail in there, but I just want to briefly say that Open you know, Toolkit, which is available for Intel uh, neural computing stick, is very much valuable for this one. And they do have a very good uh, documentation for uh, Raspberry devices. And also they do have pre-trained models, which can be useful for you know, preliminary uh, training. But uh, for the actual, for accurate results, you should uh, you know, train your own models for better results suited for your own ap application. And some of them, those pre-trained models are you know, object detection models, object recognition models, and free identification models that you can see over here. But I said these are very good as a you know, preliminary first round training of your uh, method, but it's better for you to uh, develop and train your own uh, models. And also for that, OpenMino provides a very nice tool where you can you know, develop your own model and then turn it into a you know, neural computer stick way or OpenMino understandable uh, model type. So with that, I have been talking so long. I would like to thank you all for listening to me and I'm open to any questions that you have. Thank you. Uh, Kadim, can you can you go to Q and A tab and you have some questions there? Yeah, I, I just opened it. I'm reading it now. So for uh, shop to look case now there are. Uh, applications and browsing is one of them. And there's like, let me go to the slide, if I can find it. So there are several applications like that. Uh, VSense, for example, uh, ScreenShop and browsing where uh, you can have a visual search, you can upload your photo. And then after you upload that photo, those applications will find the corresponding uh, products. And from that, they will direct you into the uh, corresponding store where you can buy the product of, of the look. Um, I'm not sure about that. I mean, it's whenever we do have the in-store camera systems over there, we are not uh, getting any individual uh, information about the user. Okay, we, we can get the actual age information or, you know, uh, all those information, but we are not uh, uh, sharing or we are not even and keeping any information. We, we don't know who, who the person is. For model prediction accuracy, uh, actually we are basically looking at our test data set and we are 
calculating with our own uh, evaluation and validation test data set. And we, uh, we measure our prediction accuracy with respect to our own data sets. I will not be available to share this presentation through PDF or any other form. So this is it. Unfortunately, I will share this. Uh, for the server side technology, we are actually using Keras. And also the different types of, I mean, for different applications, we have been trying the different types and PyTorch seems very reasonable as well. Uh, for for the large amount of, of data, we are using cloud-based services. There are a couple of fashion uh, data sets, but they are very simple and you can use them. You can use it. There is fashion amnest, which is a very basic data, data set where you can, you know, train uh, your data very, you know, uh, simply. And there's deep fashion, but I'm not sure whether it's available to everyone. And for our case, unfortunately, our, our data sets are not uh, publicly available. Not, not actually, we are not uh, in the yet, yet profiling. This is actually an ongoing uh, study, let's say, and we have been uh, having this type of information in some other parts of the world, let's say, and we are not profiling any customer information yet. And all those informations over here, we are using actually for the you know web analytics case, we are using, <coughs> sorry, fake data to, you know, form those values. Uh, the case of, you know, the output recognition have a very different applications. We are not very certain of the actual uh, direct application of it yet, but uh, uh, when we can have the information of the, of the customers and how they are wearing, we can get their style information. We can get what type of uh, outfits that they have been trying on in the past. And this gives a brief idea of what they can like. And by combination of, as I said, in the, in the recommendations part, when we can uh, cluster similar customers, we can recommend them uh, much more, or much more pers personalized outfit recommendations. So that according to those uh, recommendations, we can come up with a better you know, uh, catalog in the store. Uh, TF light does not actually work well for our cases. So we haven't, we were not able to get it work uh, in a, you know, convenient way.
uh, this, this is actually one of the cases. So since you know retail has has this shrinkage, and basically uh, with this you know pandemic or similar uh, cases, we will have much more uh, shrinkage in retail. But right after pandemic, for example. Uh, if the retail owners have these information of like outfit recognition as the online customers, as online retailers as, as where the, you know, they can have uh, such information there. Uh, if we can have similar information for the stores, they can adapt themselves with respect to those expectations of the customers. So it can be not only a retail store, but also a retail store combined to an online store and based on that, it can, you know, make more benefit and then can connect both online site and, you know, actual store as well. So basically, instead of uh, the cases like shop to look case are basically for the customers and especially for social media apps or some other cases, you can easily go there and then find those corresponding stores. And then whenever someone clicks shop to look, you can, you can find the corresponding brand product and then you can easily direct the customers to that corresponding brand store. And then they can find it from that. I hope this answers your question, Dave. We are actually uh, did not use any dimension reduction uh, techniques for the training images, but uh, we do use them for, for the rest for, uh, to determine like image descriptors where we have C times D descriptors, which makes like more than 50K. And for those type of things, we can use PCA and ICA to get better results. I mean, lower dimensions to represent the data. Actually, it's, it's not, it's, it may be the case day, but sometimes it's, it may not be the case. Whenever we provide product uh, recommendations, we 
we not only you know show all type of product recommendations we also provide the brand information with that and some people are very specific to go and uh, select from corresponding uh, individual brands so this might be handy for such applications too I'm not sure uh, uh, individual brand itself is re really interested in this, but you know this will be very, uh, let's say, good uh, satisfactory experience for the user, for the consumer. Uh, when there were not enough training images, actually, we get more. We label them more, so that that was our solution. Unfortunately, I cannot give a direct answer to that anonymous attendee. So uh, I'm not sure the actual percentage of the highest return or you know the conversion rate improvement, but we are sure that by using this technology, the conversion rate will, will improve a lot, but uh, it depends on, on the you know store, it depends on the location, it depends on how the customers will react to such uh, implementations as well. Uh, we are using generative methods. We are using data augmentation as well, but uh, it may be useful for some approach, but it may, it may not be a perfect solution for some. For example, if you are trying to find different colors or different uh, tones of red, for example, red, pink, you know, using data, data augmentation or such generative methods may not be uh, a good solution, but for some others, you can have generative methods to solve, you know, lacking data problem. Yeah, definitely. We are looking uh, different recommendation styles, and we do have uh, testing teams, let's say, and then we we, we have a vast you know amount of testers for recommendations for either you know different type of recommendations for content based recommendations for collaborative recommendations with different parameters, and we have been continuously testing uh, such features for our app. Uh, for for store and client data, we do we do have a specific location, and actually, it depends. Uh, it started with my own uh, camera system. I'm not sure whether you will be able. To, so I I have a camera system in my apartment as well, so I can get those information by myself. And then we also have some stores which are agreeing to do so, and we are getting some uh, specific information for that for using our training purposes. Uh, 
Uh, we are not using audio, no. Uh, we we do have retailers who are willing to pay money, and we were actually planning to install these cameras to some locations in different countries. I cannot say which of them, but uh, due to this uh, pandemic process, since we do not have any flights and any you know actual working source yet, so this is postponed. Uh, a couple of months so that we will get them installed in those uh, stores as well as this pandemic is over. Uh, would it be of any concern of privacy or it just wouldn't help much? Uh, actually, it, it is, it's in development phase now and we do have concern of privacy, privacy to some point, but since we are not uh, actually getting any personal information, uh, we are just getting the you know, basic characteristics without identifying the person himself or herself. Uh, people are actually willing to uh, install these cameras to their stores and they do think that uh, this may help to their uh, conversion rates in stores. And one thing is that people are using, you know, traffic count uh, cases a lot. In most of the stores, you can see these camera systems. I'm not sure about US actually, but in most of most parts of the world, there are so many companies where they, they do have this traffic count, where, and then they count the customers entering or exiting to, to the store. So you can just check, you know, the malls, and then you will see, you know, small cameras right on top. And, and in addition to that, we, we do have security cameras all around the malls, and we, we, we are already sharing that information. And again, the I would like to emphasize that with this in-store system, we are not getting any face data stored anywhere. So we are not getting any personal information. Uh, which use cases have the most uptake adoption by the stores? Uh, especially the uh, web page analytics of, of the customers are very interesting to the stores. So they are not actually uh, specifically interested in actual customer, you know, age or per uh, uh, ethnicity or you know gender, but what do they care about is an average statistics of their customers and you know their characteristics in what part and what how they are uh, you know how their outfits are and etc. So web analytics part is the most uh, 
interesting part where you can filter out all, all different type of information of, of the customers. Uh, can I share my presentation? Unfortunately, I will not be able to share the presentation in either a PDF or in other form. So do we sponsor any projects? Uh, no, not actually. I think I have answered all the questions here. Projects uh, related to retail is very interesting, Milan. So I have been enjoying doing you know, such kind of projects and it's really fun. Uh, Anonymous attendee, is it fair to say that most retailers are still interested for the most part in the usual bread and butter analytics on transactional data rather than multimeter data? Unfortunately, they are uh, because, you know, those statistics are kind of a, you know, a summary of what you have been doing in, in you know, at the background and the forehand is much more important than the backhand. They don't care about how you get those things. I mean, of course, they, they should be, you know, real, real data using some all type of visual search and etc. But what they really actually care about those, you know, one page statistics where you can show all the relevant information for their important business decision. So if you have them ready, then you are good to go. Then they, 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 they will not care about all the multimedia data that you have been uh, producing to get those statistics.
Uh, is there another question? Or did I miss anything from this list? I thought I, I answered all of them, but I'm missing some. If there is no other questions, guys, thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you like the talk. Uh, do we have more questions? Uh, Kadim, do we have more questions? No, no, no. Okay. All right. Uh, we would like to thank Kadim Tashdemir for this awesome presentation. And we will continue those meetups, workshops uh, in the future. Uh, thank you for everyone uh, participating in this workshop today. And uh, see you in the next event. Thank you very much.